Good morning, magandang umaga, and welcome to today's episode of My PI Dream. Today is Friday, and it is build day 221. It's build day 221 on the construction schedule out at Villa Feliz, and it is a beautiful morning. Look at this guy, and what does that mean? That means nothing. <laughs> Uh, but I'm hoping it stays like that all day today, and I'm hoping that we have a full crew. I don't know if there's an extended holiday for the uh, some of the workers, uh, but I'm hoping we have like a dozen or so of our normal crew. I'm hoping we have the roofing crew in this morning, and we can move forward. <laughs> and I'm hoping Manny comes in today and starts working on the drainage. We need to get the drainage in. I think he said he was going to be in on Friday. I will soon see as soon as I get out there. Uh, so anyway. Lots of good news. Number one good news. There was water yesterday when I got home. I have water here. I was able to wash my shoes, uh, wash a, uh, one of my towels, and uh, I will do some more wash because uh, it's approaching the weekend and start getting that started. So we have water. We have sunlight. I have my lunch. I got my backpack packed <laughs> and uh, that's all I got. So anyway, let's go ahead and get today started. So without further delay, let's get today's video underway. Morning, Ronnie. How's everybody today? It's not. It's my lunch. It's my lunch. It's my lunch. I have ramen and peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Uh, blessing, blessing, blessing. Blessing. Uh, blessing. January or February? We have blessing. Uh, well, we have to wait till we have to have furniture. <laughs> no furniture yet. All right, guys. Have, have a great morning. Okay. My Roy. Yes, we have water. <laughs> I owe you a lot of bottles. I have a lot of bottles in my house. Turn back. Morning. Morning, Tess. How are you today? Back to work? Yes. Are you cooking anything good for dinner tonight? Chicken tenola. Chicken tenola? Okay. I will take one chicken tenola tonight. That'll be perfect. All right. See you tonight. Thanks. All right, well, I just got my first <laughs> my first cancellation of labor this morning. Uh, it was Manny. I just got a text message from Manny. Manny has some kind of mm, appointment or something that he has to go to to get something straightened out. So he won't be in today. Remember, Manny is my man for doing all my drainage, and I was hoping he would be in today. Uh, so what I might do is, it's going to be tough work, uh, but what I might do is I might... Uh, proxy for him and actually do some of the labor myself I, I need to start getting rock down into that driveway area uh, so we can do some uh, comp compacting and at least get some down inside that hole I don't know if my if we have a full crew I'm hoping somebody else can join me with doing that because I think they have most of the uh, fence work done uh, I don't know if they have all the plaster work done if they have all the plaster work done and that means we can do Good morning that means we can do uh, other things like put gravel down in the driveway.
we have about 11 folks working here this morning uh, but not one of them has anything to do with the area that I want uh, attention focused to which is this area right here uh, maybe hop on not hop on the dog but hop on the worker he's the only one and I might grab him today it might be me and him I don't know where any of the uh, other laborers are that do uh, that kind of stuff anyway, I have to grab gravel from over there and get to over here that's a lot of hard work oh and uh, I don't know how this happened I don't know if Marianne is a magician or she is Supergirl but this is the second floor we have no stairs and uh, I think she's up here how did you get up here did, did you climb the scaffolding how did you get up here how did you get up on the second floor the question is how are you going to get down from the second floor Here it is 946 and no roofing team. Uh, I'm wondering if they're even coming in today. And we don't have any of the mason guys. Uh, and they're the guys that work on the all the stuff down there. The stuff that I was doing earlier, they would be moving the gravel, uh, finishing the wall, digging everything out. They're not here either. They must be on, I imagine they took the entire week off instead of just the two days. Uh, so I'm going to be willing to bet those guys won't be back until Monday. Uh, this is being Friday. Uh, we'll see. Oh, I th oh, here is almost 10 o'clock and the roofing team is just arriving. Hmm. So this is what I'm talking about. I don't understand this. Uh, these, every, everywhere where we have a level, lower level, then the posts go lower. Uh, higher, the, they go up. So here, the fence went up, we have a higher one. We have a shorter one, which is a, down to the height of these guys over here. And every one, the rest of them, which this entire run here, is at the same height. So this one is about mm, 10 or 15 centimeters lower, which tends to make me think that they didn't do the form correctly on here. And then, uh, the, uh, they just cut off all the rebar at the tops. If they had to do a correction, like the rebar still knows, that's what he's cutting right now. Uh, now he has nothing to attach it to, which means they have to drill more holes inside there and put more rebar inside there. Is it is it me? Or, I don't know. So after I identified that we had a problem with one of the posts, they ran a line uh, and they ran where they all line up. So make sure that we have the right height. But you see, we're here. Oh, yeah, they got a tape measure. That's kind of cool. 
And what did I say, 10 before? Oh, this is actually, uh, yeah, and it, it's actually 20. Uh, 20 centimeters. So, again, they, <laughs> they cut off all of the rebar inside here. So they're gonna have to drill down, put some more rebar. They're gonna have to put a form on there and they're gonna have to pour 20 centimeters of uh, concrete there. And, but it will never be as strong as the original, that's the thing. So uh, I should have caught that before. Not a big deal. It's like one of those Disney fairy tales with all the sprinkles that are floating down from the side. See that? These sprinkles are uh, people sanding. So I actually got started this morning, but then I spoke with my builder about this and we were talking about the gravel that's going down here. And uh, I'm, I'm doing all this labor down here. <laughs> and we have a truck that's gonna be coming. Uh, we're gonna have a delivery of gravel and they're gonna drive the truck. Somehow, they, they gotta do something because it's gotta go over. I think they're gonna stop right there and they're gonna dump it down in this area. And we'll just be able to shovel the uh, gravel over into this area right here. So I'm like, I'm not gonna kill myself anymore working down here by myself. Uh, but what I did, I got some done down here, but what I also I got, I asked my builder also, I said each one of these segments in between these steps, I wanted all these things dug down. And I wanted them to go down like about 30 centimeters down inside. And I want to, I want to fill it with con uh, compressed, uh, compressed, <laughs> and I wanted to, and I wanted to fill all of this with compressed uh, three quarters uh, crushed rock inside there. And that's for drainage. And I want it all packed down inside there because that'll work better to allow the, the water to drain through the glass. So something I asked, something else I worked on a little bit this morning is I dug out this entire section right here. I dug it down, oh, about 20, 30 centimeters. And, uh, and then I, I got all the soil out of there and I put the three quarter inch crushed uh, rock inside there. And uh, it needs to be compacted. Actually, you should put about mm, around uh, five, about five centimeters at a time and crush it down and keep doing that as well. And uh, what I want, the reason that you do that is all these steps, and it needs to be done all the way up. That, it should actually be deeper than that. And when you put the grass rot, the, the, the grass blocks on, and when you put the grass blocks on the top of those, uh, above the sand, the leveling of the sand that's gonna go down inside of there, that's gonna give really good drainage because the drainage will go through the grass blocks and then they will go through the crushed rock and then they will hit the soil below. And they don't have, it doesn't have a chance of, of setting up if the, if the soil gets too compact from people walking on it and walking on it and stuff like that. If the soil gets too compact, then uh, the it'll, it'll it'll so if the soil gets too compact, uh, the soil will, will start. Uh, so so the reason you put the the crushed rock inside there, it gives it gives you a lot better drainage, and uh, the if you have dirt and soil inside there and it's compact and then it starts getting saturated with water. It fills up much quicker and gets soggy and things like that. This will give support for all the pedestrian people traffic that's going to go up and down. I asked, I asked my builder to do that somehow. Um, maybe, maybe he was going to do it. Maybe I'm just uh, anxious to get it done and they were going to do it anyway. But I'll, I'll remind him for the rest of the steps that needs to be done that way. So you remember this morning I was doing some of the dragging some rock down here and spraying it out it needs to be compacted uh, but I don't have it's not that thick it's only about five centimeters right now then we can get the mm, the compactor they built their own remember you remember when we were first doing the slab on the very bottom and we didn't have anything to compact the soil with so they went out and they made one out of a log and they put some handles on it well I think that's what we still have I'd like to go down to with the hardware store and pick up a, a real one with the long pole it makes it much easier uh, but I, I did this and after I did this this morning, I was uh, go I'm like man I'm killing myself here and I asked my builder. I said, you know what? Uh, we need to also get some more rock and uh, and I need some more help with this down here. He said, oh, we're, we have a truck coming in with a delivery and they're gonna dump this the gravel right here They're gonna back up inside here and dump it in there 
and it'll be real easy to get in here and like, why am I killing myself? So that's going to be taken care of. I'm not sure what day we get the rock delivery on that. And hopefully very soon. I think it is very soon. So even that, though that was done, one of the things I asked my builder to do is each one of the steps, I wanted to go down about 30 centimeters to dig out all the soil in between each one of the step runs, and I want to fill it in with compacted gravel. Uh, you see, I did this one today uh, myself. I went ahead and dug out all the soil. I dumped it on the other side of the hill there, and I dragged a bunch of my boys in containers uh, full of rock back here. And it's, it's not compacted. It needs to be compacted inside there. Uh, but I just wanted an example. I, I looked at this one. This one was actually done. And the reason this one was done, because that's the one that has the perforated pipe that runs from behind the retaining wall, underneath there, underneath there, and ends up down here. That's this guy right that comes out right over here. Um, I have to look at this. If that's soil, uh, <laughs> then that's wrong too because that was supposed to be all crushed rock inside there because if you have soil on there the soil will clog up the the holes and that portion is useless if they do that so we'll have to take a look try to pull some of the soil off of that uh, i hope they put rock back in that uh, if, if you turn your head for a second something something gets done wrong around here so anyway uh i'm gonna have to get them to continue digging each behind each one of the step runs and fill that in with crushed rock and the reason it's put crushed rock is because it's for drainage if you leave just the soil inside there, what will happen is it'll get compacted and when it rains really hard, it will saturate very fast and then you'll have the water run. And then the water's going to end up running down here. Then it's going to have to go and it's going to put another strain on this section right here. So we want to give as good drainage on the steps as possible. So anyway, this delivery right here, this is, do you remember when we put the order in for the precast? All the details that are going around the house. And this is the beginning of the precast. This design right here is one that's going to do the border of the trim. Here, I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you on our design that's on the front of our bunkhouse. So what they're delivering right now is this portion right here. This little detail that goes wrong. It's like a border trim that goes along between the first floor and the basement. Uh, but they they'll be bringing in all this. They'll be bringing this trim in, all of this trim, the trim that goes around the columns. Uh, all the trim around the entire house. Also, the, the shutters. The shutters are, I think they do that. I don't think we get it from someplace else. I think they'll be doing the concrete uh, FAW type shutters. So you remember the other day when I was asking my uh, builder to make sure we have a input and output valve so we can isolate the pump uh, in the event we need to do a repair on it so we can cut the water off going into it? And uh, he did that. So we have the input and we can shut it off on the output. And we can shut it off on both sides for maintenance of the filters and we can shut off every segment of the house for maintenance. The one great idea that a lot of people had they, they had a, a bypass uh, where you could actually bypass the pump if you could take the pump entire pump out, which would mean doing a bypass from here up to here, uh, we could have a connection inside there, and that's that's easy to do. And I should have asked him. I hate to ask him again, but that's probably a really good idea to have. Maybe it's the last hour of the day, but I got some help on working at, and uh, that's good. And I also was working, you didn't see me, I just got done working on some of the sump. I cleared out some of the water in the sump. I made the, the uh, pipe, the exhaust pipe that comes out of the uh, sump pump that goes through the pipe that goes to the back of the house into the storm sewer. I made it a little bit shorter because I had it all rolled up so I, you can see in the back back here I have some extra left over here so I cut this amount off of it. I had a bunch of extra uh, of the uh, nylon pipe so when we were doing the cistern and stuff like that I had plenty to get it over the fence in the back but since we're done with that uh, I cut this off to the exact amount that I wanted uh, what we have to do inside the sump we have to do a cleaning there's a lot of debris inside there uh, and some garbage and coke bottles and some construction material uh, but that's not a priority right now. We'll get to that at some point. We'll dry it out, get it all the way down, and we'll do the permanent mount of the sump pump down there. 
first coat of the waterproofing is inside here right now. Uh, I asked, I asked my builder in the showers. I want the entire shower waterproofed as well. Um, I'm gonna see, I'll talk with him. That's another thing I'll talk with him when he comes in here. Uh, I don't know if he's using a different compound than the Cambridge compound that we have in there. And it could be. So I remember when we first started talking about waterproofing, uh, he said he puts one coat on all of the walls. Uh, and it was a different, it was something similar to what I use in the US. Like I use, a, I think it was called Red Guard. Uh, that's the red coated uh, waterproofing that I did when I did the renovation back at my house in Charleston. So uh, I'll talk with him when he comes. I don't know if he's coming back in today or not though. Well, I was going to give you a drone 360 view of what they did today on the roof. And uh, they did quite a bit in the amount of time that they were here today after 10 o'clock. But mm, my drone battery was dead. I forgot to recharge it after the last session. So unlike the Boy Scouts, I was not prepared today. So anyway, tomorrow maybe uh, if it's a nice day and we have beautiful skies like we do right now, and it's night, the wind is no wind. <laughs> it, it's nice and still. It's, it's just the perfect amount of uh, breeze in the background. It's a little bit cool, but it's uh, not blowing anything or wreaking havoc with the microphone. So we'll try that tomorrow. Hopefully it will be a good day tomorrow. Oh, uh, tomorrow I have to go to an anniversary. Uh, an anniversary event, but I might be able to do it in the morning or after the anniversary event. The anniversary event starts at 10 o'clock and then it will go from the seminary. We have a uh, Catholic seminary here at Tierra Maria and then it moves over to the clubhouse and uh, I will be there. I don't know how long that will be, but I plan on having some work clothes so I can do some work here as well. So uh, hopefully we get a good drone shot tomorrow. You, you get into everything. That is not for you. You should not be eating plastic. You eat plastic all the time. What is up with you? <laughs> no. Hop on is like a boxer. Do you see him? You see him doing that with his paws? Crazy dog. And you. You the, the the stair climbing dog. You look you you look guilty. You look guilty. Oh, right, so anyway, I'm uh, I'm gonna do a wrap up. It's a quarter till, and they're gonna be breaking here pretty soon. And what I want to do is I just want because I don't know some of the things that got done today because I was digging, and I was inspecting some things. Then I'm gonna show you some things that I caught today as we start going along with our inspection as we're going through. So uh, let's start out with what we're doing over here. Remember over here is where I was working part of the day today and that's digging and uh, the stairways it, where we're putting the gravel down inside we're removing some of the soil we're putting the gravel inside there and that's going to be for drainage of course you saw the the guys on the roof uh, again I, I I apologize for not doing a 360 on the drone shot because I love doing the drone shots here uh, but they are progressing and I'm going to say another at least two days I would say two two more days at the rate that they're going I, it, it would be only a couple days if they started at seven or eight o'clock in the morning and worked all the way through but I, I would say most of the time it's only about about five hours a day that four to five hours a day with the lunch break so uh but then again it's looking really good so i can't complain about that so let's walk inside the house and see some of the stuff that got done today so anyway, for the last um, several days this is the feature that's going up inside the sunroom area right here and it's going to be that neat design uh, the curves and wave looking kind of thing it's going to look really neat but that's what he's been working on several days and that's what he's still working on today of course all the guys that are doing the cleaning up of all the the uh, gypsum board those guys are working lots and lots of sanding done today you saw all of the it's like it was snowing inside here most of the day and the last couple of tiles in the laundry room, the, that area back inside there, got completed inside here. So they'll probably be cleaning this place up pretty soon. We still got to get the, uh, the granite to go for the countertop over there, and I'll be looking for that in the next few days. I think that might be a Sunday road trip. In this room right here, a painting, some of the finishing of the painting. Look, it's starting to look very nice inside here. I think most of the ceiling por portions and we'll do some cleaning up of this area right here because this isn't finished either. Uh, we got some stains from when we had some rain coming through and then some of the tin work got a little bit of rust when it goes down. But they'll, finish, they'll do a cleanup, a final solution of 
of the boys in 701 inside of here. I also noticed today, um, and I showed you earlier, some of the waterproofing in here. Again, I have to talk with the, my builder about doing the waterproofing of the shower stall as well. And uh, he's, I, I, he's not going to show up. It's a quarter till, ten till, and uh, there's no way he's going to be here at the end of, end of business day today. He'll be here tomorrow. Normally, it's on Saturday. He's here for most of the day. Uh, you can see they're setting up. They're putting the stuff on the floor. So that's going to be probably for tomorrow morning, uh, starting painting in bedroom number one. And I'm not sure what this chunk of wood is for. I thought maybe it had something to do with doing the side framing on here, but I really don't know. It got, got put over there earlier, and I don't know what, what's... I have no idea. Um, I'll find out later. We'll keep an eye on that. And also today we took a delivery of some of the precast, and they said they were coming right back with some more of the precast, but I don't think they're coming back. I, don't know, I think it'll probably be tomorrow because it's, it's after five o'clock now. Uh, you see everybody's getting off, getting cleaned up and things like that. Uh, there's one more thing that got done today and I'll show you real quick. And this section right here, all this got done today. So they poured uh, the forms and they pulled the, fo pulled the forms off. So it must have, I, they must have done, oh, they were doing it earlier this morning. So that was an all in one day. And then they only have two sections on the end right there and then they have to start doing the front. None of the front is done. Or, of course, some of the front, remember, is the curve around the coconut tree. Uh, so maybe they'll start working on that tomorrow. Uh, what I wanted to point out to you that I have to talk with my builder. Let me show you something that caught my attention today. What I want to do is I want to point out what caught my attention today. And it has to do with the, the CR shower on the first floor. And there is a floor drain that goes connects to that big pipe right over there. And that pipe goes down to a larger pipe that goes to the, to the sewer. Now, the, the pipe that goes to the sewer, um, it goes right into a T. It doesn't go into a 45. There's no angle that goes with the flow or anything like that. Whenever you have any type of pipe, you should, uh, you should never put it into a T. You should never have it drop into a 90 degree where it like slams. And then it's, it's like at a intersection and, and it's like, do I go left or do I go right? And you, since you have such a slight slope around here, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go in both directions. <laughs> and it will eventually go the other way, but you should always be going in the, the flow uh, direction of the exit, which would be that way. So what they should do, that should go to a 45 degree, another 45 degree connected to the pipe all the way down at the bottom. And I'm going to talk with him tomorrow to see if they can make that correction. Right, before I close, I just want to make a mention. I just I just went up on the uh, by the roof by the lanai back there, in that specific valley that I have concern about water collecting and shooting. And because remember they have that column up there, so there is no place for the water to jump into the mm, the gutter that secret gutter in that area. Uh, bad engineering uh, on that section right there. So what I asked the the um, decra rep the installer up there a couple of weeks ago when I first came here I asked them in that area right there to put a diverter and in, uh, when we do gutters in the US if you have a place that's vulnerable to really fast rushing water down uh, that would normally go over it would just completely bypass your gutter system and and lots of water would come down and not go in your gutter you put a diverter inside there and it's about oh it stands about two inches tall and you put it in the corner and it hits up against that and then it drops down inside your gutter system. And that's what I asked him. I thought he understood what I was talking about. And I, I think he does, uh, but what he's proposing uh, for that area in, inside the valley right there, right where the gutter is, is, is using some of the material that they have, but it's only, it, it's only gonna make it go up about one inch. Uh, I don't know if that's gonna be enough uh, to catch all the water when the water comes down to that flood. The only way we'll be able to find out is if he installs it, then we watch it during a big heavy rain. And then if it doesn't work, we might have to have it changed. So he's going to show me an example tomorrow, uh, what that's going to look like. So we'll take a look at that tomorrow and, uh, and then hopefully we can test it and hopefully it works. We'll see. Well, anyway, it is getting dark really fast here and I need to pack up my Kubo. I didn't do any editing today, so it's going to be a busy night for me tonight. And tomorrow it was going to be Saturday and it's going to be build day 222, 222 on the construction schedule here at Villa Feliz. So uh, remember tomorrow is going to be a partial day. I'm going to be attending a uh, wedding anniversary here on uh, the subdivision air, uh, site. 
and uh, but I will be here for part of the day. I have to take delivery. My wife ordered some stuff from China, and I think it's China from China. I think we're getting some plates and things like that, and it's coming through FedEx. So I will let you know if you if you order anything uh, international and it goes through FedEx. What I've seen is they charge you a delivery, even though the the vendor that you order from uh, says free shipping. The shipping is free. You don't pay for that. But when it comes in, FedEx always charges you. FedEx Philippines charges you 560 pesos. And it's not for a combined shipment. It's for every shipment inside that shipment. Because uh, we she ordered two boxes, and they're coming as a combined shipment. But the two boxes, each individual box, is, uh, they're going to charge us 560, which is going to be, what is that, mm, 1,120 pesos or something like that. Uh, again, my math teacher is going to be very angry at me if I got that wrong. So, th just to be aware, if you do some type of shipping like that, and if you haven't experienced that before, you're going to see that. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to close for now. Uh, today has been a pretty good day, even though we we had not quite the full crew. I think I said we had about 11 people here, uh, but some good stuff got done on the site today. Uh, Manny didn't show up today. Well, he did show up. Uh, we talked a little bit, and then he left, and he said he's going to be back tomorrow. Uh, hopefully he is here tomorrow and we get this section all done. Because remember, none of this has been waterproof. None of this has been dug out underneath the pipe. And uh, it needs to have uh, uh, digging, gravel put down, waterproofing, all the whole thing that I've been asking for for six months now. So hopefully some of that gets done tomorrow. So I'm going to close for now and, and get home. So anyway, if you enjoyed today's video, uh, please give me a thumbs up. Please share. And if you have not subscribed, just click on that little My PI Dream in the bottom right hand side of your screen. You will be subscribed and you will be notified each time I upload a new video. So until tomorrow, you have a wonderful and blessed day.